Welcome to the Eczema Warrior Podcast. I'm your host, Julia Chen. I'm here to help you heal your eczema naturally so you can finally live your best damn life. Many years ago in my own eczema healing journey, I was stuck and confused on how to heal my skin. Fast forward to today, after many lessons learned and lots of trial and error, I am now living my best life and traveling the world with clearer skin. If you're an eczema or TSW warrior who desires a life of food freedom and is wanting to heal your skin without steroids while using mindset and manifestation as a tool, you're in the right place. Now let's get into it. Hi everyone, welcome to episode 64 of the podcast and today we're going to be talking about how to reduce inflammation. If you heard me share a little bit of a life update in the last episode, I talked about how I'm now shifting my content towards general inflammation, helping everyone else who might not necessarily have eczema or who are going through TSW because we live in a world now where people are experiencing a lot of chronic symptoms and I want to talk about it today because all of this is linked to different root causes and I know a lot of you who actually have eczema are also experiencing other symptoms as well because everything is interconnected, all of the body organs are connected and so when we're trying to heal eczema you're also healing your entire body as well. So this episode and episodes moving forward, I'm going to be talking about all kinds of inflammatory symptoms and basically just how to heal it through diet, through lifestyle, through supplements, and of course, mindset as well. So I just want to put it out there for those of you who are listening to my podcast, maybe you're a a new listener or you just landed on this episode. I, I know the title right now says Eczema Warrior Podcast, but I'll be sharing a lot more topics um, outside of eczema as well. Okay, let's get into it. So when it comes to inflammation, it shows up in diff- it can show up in different areas of your body. And of course, with the skin, you'll experience symptoms like eczema, rashes, acne. These are all signs of inflammation. If you have inflammatory symptoms in your digestive system, you'll notice you'll have gut problems. You'll notice you have bloating. Uh, dysbiosis, gas, constipation, diarrhea. These are all symptoms that are not normal, that are inflammatory, that we want to address through nutrition and through lifestyle changes. There are also other symptoms like fatigue, headaches, PMS symptoms, joint pain, problems with your immune system. So if you're frequently getting ill, that's also a sign of inflammation. There's also inflammation that shows up in your mind. So actually depression, anxiety is also can be a symptom of inflammation as well. We want to be mindful of how our bodies are feeling and mindful of these symptoms because these symptoms are telling you something is out of balance and it's trying to communicate with you. So instead of ignoring those symptoms, or slapping on a band-aid like taking a medication that doesn't get to the root cause we need to figure out what is the driving force of this inflammation so let's talk about that right what are the causes of these symptoms and the inflammation that you're experiencing and we're going to go through um, each system and i'll give an example of each so if you're someone who's experiencing eczema eczema is heavily linked to the gut because of the gut skin connection And so if you have gut issues going on and that root cause of the gut issues could be, for example, from stress or from a past medical history of taking a lot of antibiotics or medications growing up or even in the recent years, that can cause issues in the gut, which can cause skin issues as a result. You see how all of that is linked? So eczema is not a skin condition where you just touch something or you react to the environment there's a lot of other reasons that could cause your skin to flare up stemming from the gut stemming from stress stemming from mindset so we want to find the reason why you're developing eczema in the first place and those are the areas that you want to look into is it gut related are you having symptoms in the gut is it stress related looking into your medical history as well obviously someone who is trained and who's a licensed practitioner will be able to review your medical history with you. But of course, if you're trying to figure that out on your own, if you're trying to figure out why you have eczema, you want to start looking into your gut microbiome. Uh, Stress and liver, for example, can also have an impact. Now, other symptoms like fatigue. Why are you developing fatigue? Is it because of stress? 
you're stressed out, so you're not sleeping properly, you're losing out nutrients when you're stressed, so obviously that's going to cause low energy and fatigue. So figuring out why you have this ongoing fatigue that isn't going away, even when you're sleeping 8 to 10 hours a night. Fatigue can also be caused by gut dysbiosis. It's actually a symptom. So if you have candida going on, if you have an imbalance of bad bacteria and good bacteria, then you're going to notice symptoms like fatigue. Because like I said earlier, everything in your body is connected, right? And so we want to start healing our body, looking at a holistic perspective. Okay, if you're noticing these symptoms, a lot of it stems from the gut, right? 80% of your immune system is in the gut. There's a lot of research that talks about how the gut impacts your immune system, it impacts your skin, it impacts your mindset, it impacts the brain as well. So we really have to find the root of the problem. And then from there, that's when we know what to do moving forward. Another example of inflammation, like I mentioned earlier, is if you're noticing that you get a lot of severe PMS symptoms, that is not normal. I have a whole episode about this. So definitely check out episode 60 if you want to learn all about how to heal PMS naturally. But again, that's also a symptom of inflammation. And so we need to figure out why you're having PMS symptoms where you're literally in so much pain that you're on the ground. You're literally having these heavy periods and you feel like shit every month. We want to get to the root of that. And also if you're someone who just gets sick often, if you're noticing in the past year or the past two years, you're just frequently getting ill, you're getting colds, you're getting flus, you're getting recurring infections, then that's telling us that there's something imbalanced in your immune system. Your immune system is compromised. So what is the cause of that? Is it because you're not eating properly? You're not getting enough nutrition? You're not digesting the foods you're eating? Is it because you've used a lot of antibiotics or medications in the past year because you know you're trying to heal these infections so you have to take these medications to heal that or to cure it but you haven't actually figured out how to improve your immune system so you don't have these reoccurring infections happen and it all comes down to supporting your body and giving your body the proper tools the nutrition the proper supplements and the mindfulness in order to get your body strong and resilient so you don't keep experiencing these symptoms that obviously nobody wants to experience. So once you find the cause of inflammation, which I share with you, there's different root causes and I, I know it can be confusing, but start there and look deep into those aspects that I talked about. The second thing you want to do to help reduce inflammation is to incorporate mindfulness. I bet you 95% of you guys who are listening to the podcast, you are experiencing stress of some sort whether it is relationship stress, work stress, school stress, emotional stress, stress from your health. We live in a very stressed society in general. I think as each day goes by, as each month goes by, as each year goes by, society is just getting more stressed and stressed and stressed. And, you know, with all that's going on with the economy and the world, like, of course, a lot of us have, have very dysregulated nervous systems that we need to practice regulating on a daily basis which is why if you want to reduce inflammation, you want to be incorporating mindfulness into your practice as consistently as possible. Doing your meditations every night, every morning, doing breath work. I'm obsessed with breath work. It's so good with helping with reducing stress and anxiety. I've been really into doing EFT, which is emotional freedom tapping. It's basically tapping on different acupressure points in your body. It really helps with stress and calming the nervous system. So incorporating some kind of mindfulness is only going to be helpful for you. And if you're making excuses and not doing it, then maybe that's why you're noticing all this inflammation is because you're not intentionally trying to include these practices into your routine on a daily basis. Do it consistently for the next month and I promise you, you're going to feel so much better. Yeah, that's all I have to say when it comes to mindfulness. You guys know I'm big on this and I tell all my clients to do this and if you're not including it and you're only focusing on diet and supplements, then, you know, this could be the game-changing thing for you. Okay, my third tip when it comes to reducing inflammation is to eat a whole foods diet. I think this is pretty obvious when it comes to our diet. We need to provide our bodies with lots of nutrients and anti-inflammatory foods when you're inflamed. And so what that looks like is to just eat a balanced diet, having protein, fats, and fiber at every single meal. I have so many podcast episodes teaching you how to balance your meals, but just generally speaking, eating properly, 
not skipping meals, having a good balance of each nutrient, focusing on lots of fruits and vegetables that gives you fiber, that gives you prebiotics, focusing on good quality fats. So omega threes, which come from fish, nuts, seeds, for example, and then avoiding anything that's too overly processed, right? We know that processed foods can cause inflammation, especially with diets that are high in sugar, high in fats. And so we do want to be careful with how much of that we're eating. I'm not saying completely cut it out forever and be miserable and not eat anything with any oils on it or anything processed. That's also not realistic, but it's all about balance and moderation. And I always tell my clients, if you can follow the 70-30 rule where 70% of your diet you're eating balanced meals and you're eating well, don't worry too much about the 30% where you're indulging, where you're having a piece of cake or having a night out. There's nothing wrong with that. Sometimes we get so stressed out about everything we have to avoid that the actual stress is the reason why you're flaring and you're noticing symptoms versus actually avoiding the foods. And so after you figured out the cause of the inflammation, you're incorporating mindfulness, you're eating a whole foods diet, this is when supplements are important. Supplements are actually important in general because our food nowadays is just not how it was thousands of years ago. Our environment nowadays, a lot of toxins. So we do want to supplement to support our bodies and support our digestion, our liver, our nutrients, because sometimes our bodies can't do it on its own. So supplementing is all about taking the right supplements that address your root causes. And I've said this so many times over and over and over again, please don't take unnecessary supplements. You're just wasting your money. Take good quality ones. In my practice, I use professional grade supplements that only my clients have access to. So if you need support when it comes to personalized supplements reach out to me i can help you with selecting them but of course if you're doing it on your own you know i don't really recommend it but if you are figure out your cause of inflammation first which i talked about in the beginning of this episode once you know that that's when you know what to take so if you find out the cause is you have low vitamin d you want to take a vitamin d to help bring up your levels if you find out that you have severe constipation, maybe the right probiotic is going to help with that. Maybe digestive enzymes will help with that. Maybe taking some magnesium can help with loosening up the stools. I'm just giving some examples that could be helpful. But again, everyone's body is very different. So check with your practitioner before taking supplements. But what I'm trying to pr- uh, say here is only supplement if you need to. And supplements are only meant to help support your body. It's not meant to replace a meal it's not meant to be this end-all be-all where it's supposed to heal you it doesn't if you're not doing the other tips that i mentioned today as well okay the last thing i want to share when it comes to reducing inflammation and i think this is probably the most important one i mean they're all really important but this is the key to getting those results and to actually healing and that is staying consistent this is the one thing you want to focus above all because you could have a good diet and have good supplements and have a good mindfulness practice but if you're not consistent with it and you're only doing it once a month (laughs) then you can't expect results to come fast right it's going to take a lot longer for you to start seeing symptoms improve but if you're consistent you're doing the work every day and you're having the support you're having a practitioner by your side holding you accountable It's going to be a lot easier for you to stay consistent instead of you doing it on your own, right? So that can be helpful when it comes to staying consistent is having someone to support you. But of course, doing it on your own, staying consistent is really about making sure that your protocol isn't something that you despise, right? You actually want to feel good about implementing the things that you're implementing because if you're not then of course you're not going to be consistent because you're just going to hate it you're going to hate the diet you're going to hate the supplements you're taking you're going to feel like everything's forced and i always say when it comes to your healing protocol and trying to reduce inflammation and the symptoms you're experiencing you have to be in alignment with the actions you're taking and try your best to enjoy the process and have fun with it Because if you don't, and there's a lot of resistance, there's a lot of like, oh, I have to because it's a chore, then if it's a chore, you're not going to be consistent, right? Who wants to do chores? Like, you know, when you were younger, 
your parents would always tell you to, oh, you got to clean, clean your room. You got to do it every week, change your bed sheets, blah, blah, blah. The more that you feel like it's forced because someone else is telling you to do it or you're following random tips off the internet, then the less you're going to be consistent versus if you had your own routine and you had your own methods and your own strategies, maybe it's from someone who's teaching you it, but it feels right. Like you, you do it because you feel good about it. And that's when you actually can stay consistent. And so, yeah, that's what I have to say when it comes to reducing inflammation. It's number one, finding the cause of the inflammation, really looking into your symptoms, listening to your body and seeing what it's telling you, what it's trying to communicate with you. Once you're able to find the cause of the inflammation, that's when you know what the action plan is moving forward. Number two, you want to implement mindfulness consistently, meditation, EFT, breath work, whatever works for you. Number three, eat a whole foods diet, focusing on anti-inflammatory foods, balancing meals, and avoiding processed foods. Number four, supplement only if you need to. And if you are supplementing, making sure you're taking the supplements for the right reasons and for your root causes. And of course, number five, the most important is to stay consistent. If you can't stay consistent, then I would reevaluate why you can't stay consistent. Is it your protocol being too restrictive? Figure that out. Because consistency is what drives results. And if you need support when it comes to staying consistent because you need someone to help you stay accountable, I'm your girl. I help my clients inside coaching, inside mentorship with helping their bodies feel better than they ever felt before, getting rid of eczema, healing symptoms within a few months, within even a few weeks for some people. And so if you need help with that, you know where to find me. You can go to the show notes to apply for either my eczema coaching program called clear your eczema or if you have other symptoms beyond eczema or you don't have eczema at all you can apply at the other application below in the show notes all right i wanted to keep this episode short but i always feel like i have so much to talk about but yeah i hope you enjoyed this episode if you have any questions please let me know through instagram dms or send me an email and if you enjoy this episode or any of my other episodes Take a screenshot and tag me on Instagram at juliachan.rd. Hope you guys have a good rest of your morning. Have a good rest of your night. And we will see you in the next episode. Thanks for tuning in to today's episode. Now, before I let you go, I want to let you know I have this amazing eczema visualization. This visualization has helped me so much when it comes to manifesting eczema healing, healing flares faster than I can ever imagine, reducing the itch, and just feeling great in my body. This is the exact same visualization I use for my own healing as well as my client's healing as well. And if you want to receive this visualization, then all you have to do is leave us a review, tell us what you think about the podcast, screenshot it, send it to your email at hello at juliachin.ca, and you will receive the visualization to your inbox. I look forward to seeing your review, and we will see you in the next episode.